Hello Internet and welcome to my new setup with microphone. I'm trying something new out today because I, I, I'm getting really annoyed at how hollow and thin. Oh my God, the AC just turned off. So now it should be like perfect audio. And we really wouldn't be able to do this review justice if we didn't have perfect audio because today we are talking about tools, fear, inoculum. Now, Full disclosure, I like this band quite a bit, but I'm not like hardcore Tool fan. I'm a huge fan of Maynard's voice, huge fan of Danny's uh, drumming, huge fan of Adam's guitar playing, huge fan of Justin's uh, bass playing. I'm a fan of this band. I'm just not like hardcore the way, you know, most Tool fans are hardcore, like live and die for this band. I like this band quite a bit. I am. Uh, I enjoy all the records. Some more than others, Anima being my favorite, Lateralis being right around there, and then everything else kind of being centered around those two records. Those two records really, to me, are like like quintessential Tool for me. I know for you it might be different, but for me, those are like the Tool records, and then everything around that is like icing on the cake. I love everything that this band puts out. Again, some more than others. So finally, the day has arrived. We are here, and there's a new Tool record called Fear Inoculum. It is a monster of a record, clocking in at 86 minutes and 38 seconds for the digital version, and the CD version is 79 minutes and 10 seconds because the CD can't fit any more music. So they legitimately record it to the maximum capability of what a compact disc can hold, but the digital version um, has some extra let's call them interludes. They're not really songs per se that the physical CD medium does not have. In total, this album has seven complete songs, six of them with vocals. One of them is a instrumental four and a half minute drum solo. Um, it's a fun track, but it doesn't really blend in with the rest. Now I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's just start from the beginning, right? Because there's only six real tracks to speak of. We waited 13 years and we got six tracks, but they all clock in at over 10 minutes long. Here we go. I've heard this record in full about three or four times now. Enough to know that I have an opinion on the record and an opinion on um, how I feel about it in comparison to Tool's uh, discography, to the rest of Tool's, Tool's discography. And I will say this. I think from a production standpoint, this record sounds phenomenal. I think Danny's drumming is next level stuff, but as far as how it sounds and how it's mixed, I mean, I don't think his drums have sounded better. They are crisp. They are like super tight. And I know some people don't like that. I'm a big fan of that, right? From a production standpoint, I think that sounds awesome. Adam's guitar playing is the next level on this record. He is all over the place and the guitars are loud. They are like front and center in your face right there. It sounds pretty damn good. Justin's bass playing, again, it's, 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 when you only have three main instruments to talk about and there's nothing really else muddying up the mix, if you will, the main instruments tend to be clearer. They tend to come out more. Maynard singing on this record, production wise sounds great, but I really, and I think, I'm sure this exists. I'm sure someone went ahead and did this, but I'm willing to bet that Maynard sings on 25 to 30% of this record. And that's it. He is by far, in my opinion, very underutilized on this record. Now, purposely or not, the, he's letting the songs breathe. He's letting the music breathe. The problem that I have is that there are sections of songs like Descending and Invincible and especially Calling Voices at towards the end, towards the second half of Calling Voices, where it sounds like the band, Adam, Justin, and Danny, wrote parts specifically for him to sing on because they're just chord. They're just chord progressions. Nothing of note is happening that's out of the ordinary. It sounds like vocals should be on top of it, but they're not. But one of my favorite things about Tool and one of my favorite things about A Perfect Circle, and one of my favorite things about Maynard in general, is his voice. I love the way this man sings. I think he has a phenomenal, phenomenal singing voice. Very unique that really no one else has. The man can sing, and I don't think anybody can debate that. 
So why is he so absent on this record? And not just absent, but he's also, he's like subdued on this record. There's only a few songs, Fear Inoculum and Tempest, that he really goes into like higher registers of, of his voice. The beginning of Calling Voices, he does, yes. That's about it. I don't think there's one scream on this record from him. He growls a little bit in Tempest, but I miss hearing his voice on this record. I just wanted Maynard to identify key parts of the songs to claim, to say that, hey, I'm claiming this as the verse. I'm claiming this as the chorus, or I'm claiming this as the bridge or whatever. But instead, and it's not bad, don't get me wrong, I like this record. I actually really do like this record. It took me a while, and, and someone online pointed out that you have to have, it's a very, uh, this record tests your patience, and I think it absolutely does. I don't think it's a record that, unless you're a hardcore Tool fan, you're going to listen to the first time and be like, this is fantastic, right? I know people online have either praised it or ripped it. I'm in between. I like this record. I'm not going to rip it because from a musical standpoint, it's great. They did a great job. They're great sounding songs and i will give them credit for a 10 11 12 13 10 and 15 minute song length approximately for each one it keeps my attention the entire time i'm never bored listening to this record and maybe that was a good thing that maynard took a step back i mean who knows you know i personally would have loved to hear his voice more i especially loved going into calling voices and hearing him sing with just the guitar just him and the guitar and him just kind of doing his thing. And then I wanted it to like be this exclamation. And it kind of got there. And then he did the whole, don't you dare point that at me thing. And then that's, he starts saying the, don't you dare point that at me thing in the three, four minute mark of the song. And then that's it. That's the lyric for the rest of the song. So for the next five minutes, we have all this music. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, they, we've got like this badass, Guitar riff, drum riff, bass riff, everything is playing together. And it so much sounds like the intention of that was to have vocals on top. But maybe he just, they, he didn't write something that they all liked. Or or maybe they thought after the fact that maybe it's just better if we leave it, I don't know, blank. I don't know. The arrangement on this record is interesting. It's, it's again, it, te it does test your patience. And for a record that is an hour and a half long, a 86 minute long record, you know, your patience is tested. Um, I will say that my favorites on this record are Fear Inoculum, Numa, um, actually all of them, Invincible, Descending, Calling Voices, Tempest. Calling Voices, because of that second half, I, I think just leaves a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth, but I think the rest of the record I quite enjoy. I will say that Chocolate Chip Trip, Chocolate Chip Trip, Chocolate Chip Trip, is fine. And you know what it is about this record is like the more and more I hear it, the more I can envision it in a live setting, right? Like I can envision listening to this record live, front to back, as if the band is performing in front of me, complete with solos, complete with drum solos, complete with jamming and all that kind of stuff. Cause that's what this record sounds like to me. It sounds like the band finally got over the fear of trying to one-up themselves and be as good as their previous catalog, which is what they've said in re recordings as to why, or what they've said in interviews as to why this took as long as it did to make this record, right? Um, but, you know, it sounds like they finally like hunkered down and just wrote a record, but they wrote it in a way that they would just be like jamming on stage and, and figuring something out as they went along. There is rhyme and reason to these songs. I'm not saying there isn't because, again, they are great songs. Do not get me wrong. I like these songs. But when I compare them to a stink fist, a eulogy, a parabola, or schism, or vicarious, or 46 and 2, or any of that sort, or the stuff from Opiate, or the stuff from Undertow, it's not as polished as those songs, which I don't mind. This band is allowed to grow, man. I think they've earned that, right? And, and granted, this is only their fifth full-length record, but they've earned the ability to do whatever the fuck they want to do. So far be it for me to tell them, you have to go back to writing songs like you were writing in Anima. No, they can write whatever the fuck they want, right? Because that's, that's the beauty of Tool, right? They 
they kind of write their own rules on how this stuff is written. I don't know of another band that sounds like Tool. And if you do, please let me know in the comments below because I don't. They're very unique. The interludes are fine. They don't really add anything to the record. Some are more interesting than others. I do think that ending the record with Mocking Beat was a very interesting choice and one that I don't agree with. I think if they had just ended it with Tempest, it would have been fine. Um, I don't understand the point of Mocking Beat, but again, that's me. Maybe I'm missing something. Fear Inoculum, to me, is a solid record. By no means is it their worst. I don't think they have a worse record. And I don't think it's their best. I think it's somewhere in between. There are songs on here that I do enjoy going back to. Fear Inoculum, Numa, and Tempest mainly, but I do enjoy Invincible. I do enjoy Descending. And I do enjoy Calling Voices, at least the first half of it. Chocolate Chip Trip, whenever I want to listen to a Danny Carey drum solo, that'll be perfect to listen to. That was my review of Tools, Fear Inoculum. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I have a feeling some of you are going to disagree with me. I have a feeling many of you will disagree with me because Tool is sacred ground. But you know what? I love this band and I really think that I'm just happy that after 13 years, we've got new music to sink our teeth into from the almighty tool. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you like this content, please uh, do me a favor and subscribe. I have uh, prior music reviews that I've done. I'm doing some reactions. Uh, I'm talking about sports now. I'm gonna make this an entertainment centric channel, sports included with that. Thank you so much for watching this. I'll see you soon.